Hi there. Since reviewing the series of three trilogies, starting with Game Set and Match uh, recently, I have uh, been rereading many of Len Dayton's books, um, especially Winter, which is actually the 10th book in the, in the series, which wraps up the Game Set and Match. And it's a prequel to uh, the story. And many of the characters from that uh, series are introduced into um, what is basically the history of a family in Germany from um, almost the start of the 20th century to the end of World War II. Uh, terrific book, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, the book that we're going to discuss today, SSGB, um, was written in 1978, and I hadn't read it since then. So rereading it has been a real treat, and uh, I've enjoyed it, and I want to share that uh, with you. It's, uh, uh, it's in the genre of alternative histories. And this is um, a type of writing which is quite popular and very imaginative. Um, there's been some examples of it. For example, It Happened Here, which was in um, the 1960s as a film, uh, depicted the um, Nazi occupation uh, of Great Britain. And it did it very, very well. Um, Fatherland by uh, Robert Harris, another really good book, which um, is, is about um, the Holocaust and how it was eradicated and kept secret. Uh, the Man in the High Castle, um, which uh, postulates um, America being defeated by uh, Germany and um, Imperial Japan and um, SSGB, which is the one we're going to talk about. So uh, it's interesting to look at how um, this alternative to the actual history can be uh, justified or can be based. So um, for example, in um, Fatherland, which is set in 1964, written by Robert Harris, who is a really good writer, he's written some terrific books, particularly those um, with a, some sort of a, a historical uh, theme. And it concerns a, a German police officer, and he uh, is a member of the SS, but uh, all the German police by this stage are run by the SS, and he's actually um, a detective and he uh, is, the, is um, working on a murder and eventually uh, it leads to the discovery that um, the Holocaust happened. Now that's quite plausible because um, the main extermination camps, the Operation Reinhardt camps, were uh, eradicated. Uh, Sobibar, Belchak and Treblinka um, left virtually without trace, uh, leveled, uh, in an effort to uh, keep everything secret. <clears throat> Auschwitz-Birkenau, because it was part of the larger Auschwitz complex, which was massive, was captured by the, um, the Soviets. And, um, you know, that, that, that really was the first revelation of what happened. So that, that was um, quite plausible. The man in the high castle postulates that the Nazis had developed an atomic weapon and they dropped it on Washington DC. At the same time, Imperial Japan invaded across the Pacific and um, together they uh, defeated the United States and they each occupy a coast and then there's a central sort of no man's land, neutral zone um, <clears throat> keeping them apart. 
and uh, based on the um, book by Philip K. Dick, whose work has been very, very widely filmed, things like the book uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep was uh, filmed as Blade Runner, for example. And um, int uh, interestingly, uh, the um, atomic weapon is referred to as a Heisinger device. And that links us to SSGB. And in SSGB, which takes place in 1941, um, the invasion uh, by the Germans uh, has taken place. They've successfully um, carried out Operation Sea Lion. And um, the reason for this is not really fully explained. So let's divert a little bit and speculate as to how that actually could happen. So one um, alternative history would be that Winston Churchill did not become Prime Minister. Now, in May of 1940, um, Neville Chamberlain uh, had to step down um, and his obvious success with Lord Halifax, but he declined and Winston Churchill took over to the um, great uh, relief of the entire Western world. Uh, we owe him a debt, obviously. Now, had that not happened, had Chamberlain either not stepped down or Lord Halifax um, taken up the post of Prime Minister, there's a possibility they would have negotiated some sort of peace deal with Hitler, which could have led to sort of a Vichy arrangement. The other uh, hypothesis is that the uh, Battle of Britain, which was a close run thing, was actually um, a victory for the Luftwaffe. And uh, Len Dayton has alluded to this in his, in his writing before. He's written on military history, for example, including the book Fighter. A couple of possibilities. The during the um, Battle of Britain, which the Germans call the Canal Camp, the um, Luftwaffe really didn't have a coherent plan. They tried many different tactics, one of which being um, pinpoint attacks on the chain uh, home uh, radar network and on uh, fighter airfields. Now, these were carried out mainly by the Stuka dive bomber, which could achieve um, precision, unlike uh, the multi-engine bombers uh, used by both sides, which uh, tended to miss the target often by several miles. Uh, and in the early days of the war, um, the RAF, for example, missed Germany. So uh, the Stuka, which had a lot of deficiencies, nevertheless could um, deliver the, the, the um, accuracy needed. And had they concentrated on taking out the radar and taking out the airfields, um, it could well have tipped the battle in their favour. Another consideration was that um, had they fitted long-range uh, external fuel uh, tanks to the ME-109s, they could have escorted the bombers over the targets and caused a lot more damage than they did and a lot less losses. Also engaged the RAF um, fighters um, as they were attacking the bombers and causing probably more losses in, in fighter command. So um, that didn't happen, but the Germans did have those long range tanks and the speculation has always been <clears throat> what effect would that have had? So Battle of Britain has lost, the Germans have got air superiority over the channel for the invasion. Now, I still believe the invasion would have failed, the German invasion would have failed. Um, we still have bomber command, bomber command could have bombed the invasion barges and the ports, the embarkation ports, and they would have suffered heavy losses because 
without fighter command to escort them, they would have been at the mercy of the German fighters. However, that was the case with Bomber Command anyway, over occupied Europe, into the Ruhr, over Berlin, etc. That's what they were doing. They were flying unescorted anyway. So they had horrific losses uh, anyway. And um, for the um, uh, aim of defeating the German invasion, it probably would have seemed worthwhile. Also, the Royal Navy has to be taken into account. It was a formidable force, and it, it could have dominated the channel. In uh, 1944, for D-Day, for example, um, the Allies had very specialised armoured fighting vehicles, uh, tanks, uh, barrier removal vehicles, uh, chasm breaching vehicles, uh, mine eradication vehicles, all this. They had um, marvellous technology, pipeline under the ocean, Pluto, the Mulberry Harbour, etc. Um, the Germans didn't have any of that. And, uh, you know, D-Day was still uh, a hard-won battle. So I don't think that would have happened. Anyway, for the purposes of the book, uh, the Nazis have taken at least southern England. And there's still fighting going on to the north. Um, the Americans are not in the war uh, and they haven't uh, attacked the Soviet Union. Uh, you will remember the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and uh, they had a, a non-aggression pact and they were very much buddy-buddy. Um, a lot of uh, socialists tend to forget that they were allied to the Nazis at the start. So... Um, the main character is Douglas Archer, who's a detective in the Met Police, and he, uh, the Met has been subsumed within the SS um, security headquarters. This is actually how the uh, Germans planned to do things had they invaded in the, the model used in the uh, occupied countries, particularly the Western one, Western Europe. So his boss is an SS general, Kellerman, who seems rather avuncular, but um, this con conceals the inner ruthless core because you don't get to be a senior officer in the SS without um, being devoid of scruples and um, absolutely dedicated to the party line. By a series of events, uh, starting with the investigation of the murder, Archer becomes aware of the activities of the British resistance. And it has two main strands in the book. Firstly, a plot to uh, rescue the king, uh, King George VI, obviously, who uh, has, is being held prisoner in the Tower of London. And uh, resistance has formed um, a... An, uh, an association with the Wehrmacht, the German army, who um, A, are uh, very, very much um, opposed to the SS and their uh, see seeming uh, urge to dominate the entire armed st structures of Germany, and, and B, they think it's an affront to their honour to have the king imprisoned in the tower. So there is some sort of tacit and uh, actual cooperation there. And just a point on that, the SS and the, uh, the Wehrmacht were um, in a struggle uh, against each other. There, there was much mutual antagonism. In 1941, the SS hadn't grown to the massive um, agency that it became later uh, particularly with the build-up of the Waffen-SS to roughly 40 divisions. Um, at, at 1941, the Waffen-SS existed, but it, it was rather small, especially compared to the Wehrmacht. So the, it, it was quite credible at this stage of the war for the Wehrmacht to, to be um, quite a strong force. But um, the seeds of uh, the antagonism are certainly there. The other strand of the um, resistance story concerns 
a plot to um, help the Americans rescue the British atomic scientists. And I refer to the Heisinger device, talking about the man in the high, high castle. Well, the Nazis were working on the atomic uh, bomb um, in, in the early stages of the war, and it didn't really come to fruition. Um, there were many problems, partly due to the fact the amazing SOE raid by the Norwegian um, SOE um, unit um, against uh, the heavy water plants at Ryokan in, um, in Norway, uh, which destroyed the German supplies of heavy water, deuterium oxide, which is needed for atomic devices. The uh, British had done a lot of research and practical work on um, the atom, uh, including work here in Liverpool. And um, <coughs> the Americans, um, the British and the Germans um, were all working to similar aims. Now at the end of World War II, obviously there was a big movement to seize German scientists and engineers by America, by the Soviets and by us, um, particularly uh, for the rocket programs and the aviation programs. Um, not so much for the German uh, atomic program because at, by this stage the Manhattan Project uh, had been successful and they didn't really need the, the, the rather faltering German um, research. But in 1941, um, the Americans were very, very eager to get hold of the British boffins, and they were um, doing their research in a camp um, uh, on, on near the south coast, conveniently situated for an amphibious uh, strike by uh, American Marines, aided by British resistance. And that's one of the main parts of the book. So another character is an American female uh, reporter, journalist, who um, coming from a neutral country uh, is uh, allowed certain freedoms and there's a romantic um, relationship with Doug, Doug, um, Douglas Archer echoing a similar character in um, Fatherland. Um, really interesting book. <clears throat> Alternative histories do sort of engage the imagination to a large extent, and um, uh, rereading it, I found it um, a really, really well written and um, gripping book. Now, it was uh, made into a TV series, and uh, this is the DVD of it, and uh, they did a very, very good job. <coughs> uh, it's four parts, and I'll just um, find the notes. Uh, Douglas Archer was played by Sam Kiley. Harry Wood, who is his detective sergeant, was played by the um, really well-known and very versatile uh, actor James Cosmo. He's been in many, many things, and um, uh, you know he's always a stalwart in this kind of thing. Uh, Rainer Bock was Kellerman and uh, the locations uh, were very convincing and also they, they did have the use of CGI which things like it happened here obviously never uh, could, could use anything like that. The special effects were um, to actually dress London to look like it was occupied by the Nazis. So um, I'll put links to everything relevant. There's a um, a really good uh, interview with Len Dayton talking about SSGB, which I think you find interesting, uh, as, as well as links to the book. So um, enjoy.